Tonight testing proves Catherine's water supply has PFAS levels up to double the recommended limits. A furious Supreme Court judge lashes out at lawyers in the courtroom. A mega earthquake off the coast of Mexico triggers a tsunami. What's being done to fix the foul smell lingering over Darwin's northern suburbs? And Shady Camp's new $3 million boat ramp opens ahead of a bumper weekend. This is Nine News with Jonathan Upton. Good evening. One of the Territory's major water supplies remains under threat from toxic chemicals, with testing showing levels are significantly higher than national guidelines. Live now to Amy Culpert in Stewart Park. Amy, some concerning results. Jono, testing out today shows chemicals in Catherine's water supply are as high as double the recommended levels until those levels return to normal. Jono? Amy, outstanding coverage as always. Thank you. Lawyers in the Constantinos Contenaris trial have been accused of playing games by the judge residing over the case, who also today said he'd had enough. Justice Graham told the court he was disappointed by a question asked by the prosecution as it had nothing to do with the case. It came after the defence had objected to the question. The jury was discharged early, the trial to resume on Monday. A new deal has saved Darwin's Rourke's Bar from closing its doors for good. A judge had decided the landlord could evict its tenant today. After monkey business, the formal leasee of the building fell behind in rent. A financial agreement was reached and Rourke's management said it was positive about the road ahead. Mexico is tonight struggling to determine the damage from an enormous earthquake, the worst it has suffered in more than 30 years. At least five people are dead, including two children. The violent shaking that terrified much of the country reached a magnitude of 8.4 and it's already sparked a small tsunami. It was midnight in Mexico City when the giant quake struck. Catherine Foran joins us now with a look at today's weather. Catherine, dangerous fire conditions continue today. That's right, Jono. Fire crews were kept busy. First responding to a wildfire at Darwin River, it was contained late this afternoon, but they're still fighting a blaze at Dundee Downs. It's not yet contained. Considerable resources are there, including 23 units and five helicopters. The concern with that blaze is that it's close to homes, but crews are working to bring that fire under control. Here in Darwin, it was warm, but very dry. We woke to a beautiful morning, dropping to just 17 degrees. 35 our top but thanks to that low humidity it only felt like 28. It was unseasonably cool in the rural area this morning. 11 degrees there which is 8 below average. The mercury then soared to 36 which was the hottest temperature recorded in the territory today. How's the all important weekend looking? Jono I'll have all the details later in the bulletin. Catherine, thank you. The political week has ended with the Prime Minister in Samoa meeting our Pacific neighbours while in Canberra, the opposition's focus was squarely on Barnaby Joyce. But at least both sides came together today to take the vitriol out of the same-sex marriage vote. A change of shirt, a change of scenery. Having seen what's coming, almost 700,000 people in Florida are fleeing in the face of Hurricane Irma. One of the worst on record, the giant storm has carved its way through the Caribbean, causing 14 deaths, leaving hundreds injured and destroying thousands of homes. They've been kicked, punched and torn apart. Outside of city ramps, Shady Camp is one of the most popular places to launch boats in the Territory. Today, after months of work, the government unveiled the new ramp that's set to ease congestion and make launching safer. It's the gateway to Sampan and Tommy Cut Creeks. Now, after a $3 million facelift, the upgraded Shady Camp boat ramp is ready for use. In the news ahead, incredible time-lapse video of a wildfire that's now burned through 31,000 acres. The Territory fundraiser using muscle cars for a good cause. Plus, millions of older Australians not doing enough exercise. What you need to do to prevent chronic disease. The terrifying speed of a wildfire in the US state of Oregon has been captured in an incredible time-lapse video. A cloud of smoke quickly turns to flame before an orange inferno swallows the Eagle Creek National Park. A 15-year-old boy is suspected of starting the blaze by lighting illegal fireworks. 
Commuters on a busy street in Belgium watched in horror as a sinkhole opened up. The hole caused by a leak in underground water pipes sparked panic when buses and cars heading for the road had to be turned back. 200 people have been evacuated and none of them injured. Henry's back now with all the day's sport and Henry Parramatta preparing for Mission Impossible. John, it's one of the toughest road trips in footy. We'll have more on that after the break. Plus, the Northern Sharks put in the hard yards to go back to back and plot the brothers' downfall. Can the Tigers turn the table on the Cats and deliver a finals upset? And Australia levels the series in Bangladesh, but why is skipper Steve Smith still not happy? Parramatta faced the most daunting task in week one of the finals, travelling to Melbourne to take on the Storm. And the minor premiers have added incentive to take down the Eels. Skipper Cameron Smith is celebrating an historic milestone. The Melbourne Storm have been declared unbeatable in this final series. For the second year in a row, the Northern Sharks have championships on their mind and are confident of securing back-to-back -back titles. They've had to fight and grind their way through the final series from fourth position, but insist they're up for one more challenge. Grand final week isn't an unusual fixture for the Northern Sharks. They're hoping to go back-to-back. -back. The Cats and Tigers scintillating final is set to draw over 95,000 people to the MCG. Richmond football manager Neil Baum has spoken to Tony Jones ahead of the epic matchup. Bummy, he uh, must be champing at the bit. Oh, I can't wait. It's a beautiful night. A little, little bit of rain earlier, but it looks like it's going to be pretty good. It'll be a great game. It'll be the first All-American decider at Flushing Meadows since Serena beat Venus in 2002. Expect a massive crowd for that one, Jono. Good to see a couple of new faces in the final. Henry, it is our last news. I can't go without, without saying, uh, mate, thank you so much for all of your help, your professionalism. You're an outstanding young talent. It's been an absolute blast having you on the set, mate. So uh, thank you and best of luck with your future career, mate. I know you're going to go a long way. So Appreciate it. Well done. Thanks, mate. Bit of a really handshake on it. live on air, but it's our final night. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> well yeah, done. Mate. Good luck. In the dizzy ahead. We'll have the latest headlines. Plus, you don't need to be running a marathon. The simple everyday activities for older Australians that can stave off chronic disease. A confused driver smashes into a petrol station four times, then reverses into a van. And the voice of the late George Michael returns to the airwaves. What do fans think? Returning now to our top stories, results from testing has shown PFAS levels in Catherine's water supply have been as high as double the recommended limits. Mexico has suffered its worst earthquake in more than 30 years. The magnitude 8.4 tremor already claiming at least five lives, including two children. A fire crews were kept busy today responding to a wildfire at Darwin River, which was contained late this afternoon. But they're still fighting a blaze at Dundee Downs that is coming close to homes. And after a $3 million facelift, the new shady camp boat ramp is ready for use. The authorities are expecting a busy weekend. Nearly 2.5 million Australians over the age of 65 are not meeting national standards when it comes to exercise. Activity levels have been slipping for the past few decades, a trend that has health experts concerned. The proof is in the figures. The older you are, the less likely you are to exercise. Catherine's back now with a detailed look at weather. Catherine, the city will see another cool night. Jono, it'll be lovely and cool after the break. I'll have all the details. It was a spectacular morning in the city. It dropped to a cool 17 degrees, which is six below average. Right now, it's 28 degrees. The humidity is 41%. It was a dry day here in Darwin. Just after lunch, the relative humidity was sitting on just 5%, 35 degrees the top. After a low of 11 degrees, the rural area climbed to a top of 36. Lots of warm sunshine around the Territory today. 32 in Nullumboy. Catherine hit 34 degrees, 29 in Tennant Creek. A possible shower in Perth tomorrow, 12 to 23. Canberra will drop below zero again, while Brizzy will see a beautiful day, 10 to 24. More sunshine for the top end and it'll stay fine over the weekend. Down south, Alice Springs is looking at 25 degrees, Hilara 28.
Bodie's seas will increase during the day to around a metre. East to south easterly winds 10 to 15 knots, turning north to northeasterly 15 to 20 knots in the middle of the day. Bit of movement in the tides tomorrow. High tide just around 8, 7.4 metres. The sun will be up a minute earlier, 6.44. The boys at Fishing and Outdoor World tell us West and Middle Arm are worth a look for a barra. And while you're waiting, try for a snapper. Good reports of Dewey's around Leaders Creek and the Narrows. Mark Wilson had a great day on the water landing this 76 centimetre barra. He tells us he finished the day with a barbecue. It sounds pretty good to us, Matt. Enjoy your prize pack. It'll be cool tonight in the rural area, but sunny and hot tomorrow, 37. And a total fire ban will again be in place for the northern fire protection area. Palmerston will be soaked in sunshine, 15 to 36 degrees. And it'll be lovely and cool tonight in the city, warm tomorrow, heading for a top of 35. It'll stay dry for another few days before winds ease and humidity levels slowly rise early next week. So make the most of these lovely, cool nights while we can, Jono. Catherine, thank you. Again, another wonderful, fine young journalist. I've really had a pleasure of working with so many of you over the years. So, Catherine, best of luck to you. Best of luck as well to all of our other young journalists who are moving on to other things after Darwin. Now, as you know, this is our last Nine News broadcast from the Darwin studio. So from Monday, you'll notice a change to our presentation style. We're going to broadcast for a new regional hub in Brisbane. Now, it's still going to have local reporters and cameramen on the ground here in Darwin, but the big difference is I'll be in Queensland alongside my new co-host of Nine News Darwin, Samantha Heathwood, who's going to join us now live from our new set. Sam, welcome to Darwin. This is going to be your first time broadcasting into the NT. You must be as excited as I am to be expanding into a new market. I am, Jono. It's a really exciting time, but I mean, there's so many changes in our industry right around the globe, and, and this is part of the changes. And uh, I, I know that this is a huge thing for Darwin to be accepting a new person uh, into your lounge rooms every night. But uh, I rest assured you will still get all of your international news that you love from our foreign correspondents and all the national news from all the political reporters and everybody that you know and love. And of course, you'll still have your local news. And Jono, the golden boy of the Northern Territory, I'm so delighted to be able to share the desk with you every night and I, I hope that everybody welcomes me into their homes the way that they've welcomed you. It's, a, it's big shoes to, to help fill. Sam, thank you so much and thank you to you for being so welcoming as well. Big changes for both of us and uh, I think for our audience it's going to be a great thing. So thank you and I'll see you in Brisbane on Monday. Thanks Sam. Finance and a high-powered panel has been selected to run the inquiry into the Commonwealth Bank. Former ACCC Chairman Professor Graham Samuel is one of three leading figures from the financial industry. The team is reviewing the CBA's numerous scandals, including allegations of money laundering. And on the markets today, the all odds close lower, down almost 14 and a half points. Our dollar is doing well too. It's buying 80.91 US cents, 67.14 euro at above 10,600 Indonesian rupiah. So with that, that's Nine News this Friday. I'm Jonathan Upton from all of us here in the Darwin Studios. Goodbye.